All right. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. <laughs> All right. We're going to start. Uh, nobody on yet, but it's an elusive way that we start here because we can't start directly to the link that's on the Facebook Live. Anyways, we're going to open up in prayer. <clears throat> Let's bow our heads. Heavenly Father God, Father, we come to you through your Son's name, Jesus Christ. God, we thank you, Father, for this opportunity to go into your word in the Bible, Father, to we ask you for the power of your Holy Spirit. Give us wisdom and discernment as we go through these verses, Father. Help us to understand. God, we ask you to give us freedom from distractions. Help us to just focus in on what we're doing here today, God. And we love you. We pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. All right, today's title is, What Happened to Your Beard? What happened to your beard? No, sir. It's not, it's not the title of today's message, actually. We had a situation. Someone came in and took my beard off the middle of the night. Someone named Tara did it. She made me do it. No. We'll grow it back. But today's message is actually discerning peace. Discerning peace. Now, peace is something that the majority of us, we seek. We want to have <laughs> Pay no attention to the kids in the background. We're doing our best to try to keep them quiet, but good luck with that. Um, peace is something that we strive for, that, that especially for those of us in recovery, we want to have peace. We want to feel the contentment. We want to be okay within our own selves. And so we strive to have peace. We want to have that comfortability within. And a lot of us, we don't want to do the things that are necessary to obtain the peace. Right? We look for it in a way of like instant gratification. We just we want to be able to just say a prayer or hit a button and automatically have that internal peace and comfort inside and, and really not have to go through the work to obtain that peace. So we're gonna take a look at a few verses today as we as we always do. We're gonna get lathered up in scripture here so we can understand what God is saying, how to discern the peace. Discernment is like trying to, to to separate, right? We're trying to figure out like what is the Bible saying, what is God saying to us, and, and what are the different forms of peace that we read about in His Word. So we're gonna start today in Luke chapter two, verse fourteen. And like I said, we got the kids in the background here, so try to stay with us. Luke chapter two, verse fourteen, please, nice and loud. Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace, good will towards men. Amen. Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace and good will towards men. This is a declaration of the angels when Jesus was born. They said, Glory to God in the highest. They said, Peace be with men. Why? Because Jesus Christ has now came to the earth, the Messiah, as it was prophesied, and now there's peace as a result. Jesus brought peace because no longer are we in need of a sacrificial system in order to connect to the Father. We have Jesus Christ himself which connects us. He's a mediator between us and the Father. It's through the blood of Christ that we are cleansed of our sins and therefore we're able to connect to God the Father. I don't know if anyone else is distracted with these kids, but I sure am. Hey, uh, just shut the door, honey. Just shut the door. Alright, they're getting reprimanded. Do not spill the rod. So, anyways, so we see that, that the angels sang when Jesus Christ came, right? So when we have Christ in our hearts, we should be rejoicing. We should be we should we should be overflowed with gratitude, knowing that we have salvation through Jesus Christ. Amen? Amen. So we're gonna take a look at another verse here today. We're gonna go to Luke chapter seven. We're gonna do some reading here. Uh, Luke chapter seven. Verses 36 through 50. Luke chapter 7, verse 36 through 50. And one of the Pharisees desired him that he would eat with him. Now check out the scene here. Jesus Christ, one of the Pharisees, invited Christ to come into his home to have a meal with him. All right, so these are, these are the religious guys at the time. These are the ones that were supposed to understand the law. These were the ones who were supposed to understand the prophecies that, that the Messiah was supposed to be here at this time, right? And so these, this gentleman invited Christ to go into his home and have a meal. Keep going. And he went into the Pharisee's house and sat down to meet. Mm -hmm. And behold, a woman in the city... Behold, a woman in the city, yes. 
Which was a sinner. She was a sinner. Check it out. A woman of the city who was a sinner. Keep going. When she knew that Jesus sat at me in the Pharisee's house, mm -hmm. brought an alabaster box of ointment, yes. and stood at his feet behind him weeping, and began to wash his feet with tears. Now check out the scene here. Jesus Christ is in the house with the Pharisees. A woman who's known to be a sinner comes in knowing that Jesus was there. She brought an alabaster of ointment, which was a very expensive item at the time. And she begins to anoint his feet and he begins to wash his feet in the middle of, of all these things that are going on. Keep going. So he washed his feet. She washed his feet with tears and did wipe them with, with tears. The Bible says, yes. Yes. She was sorrowful because of her sins. Amen. Everybody yes. following along here. We're going somewhere with this. Stay with us. And did wipe them with the hairs of her head. Yes. And kissed his feet and anointed them with the ointment. Amen. Now when the Pharisees which had bidden him saw it, he spake within himself, saying, mm. This man Notice what it said he spoke where? Within himself. He spoke within himself. This is the Pharisee in his own mind, in his own heart, saying to himself. Check it out what he said. This man... If he were a prophet, would he have known who and what manner of this woman is Amen. that toucheth him? For she is a sinner. Amen. And Jesus answering said unto him, Jesus heard his thoughts. Son, I have somewhat to say unto thee. Mm -hmm. And he saith, Master, say on. There was a certain creditor which had two debit debitors. The one owed 500 pays and the other 50. Okay, and big difference here. One person owes 500, the other owes 50. He's given a parable here. And when they had nothing to pay, he frankly forgave them both. Yes. Tell me, therefore, which of them will love him most? Amen. Simon answered and said, I suppose that he to whom he forgave most... And he said unto him, Thou hast rightly judged. And he turned to the woman and said unto Simon, Seest thou this woman? I entered into thine house. Thou gavest me no water for my feet. But she hath wiped my feet with tears and wiped them with the hairs of her head. Amen. Thou gavest me no kiss, but this woman, since the time I came in, hath not ceased to kiss my feet. My head with oil thou didst not anoint, but this woman hath anointed my feet with ointment. Yep. Wherefore I say unto thee, her sins, which are many, are forgiven. For she loved much, but to whom little is forgiven, the same loveth little. And he said unto her, Thy sins are forgiven. And they sat at me with him, began to say within themselves, Who is this that forgiveth sins also? And he said to the woman, Thy faith has saved thee, go in peace. Thy what has done what? That thy faith has saved thee. Her faith has saved thee. Everyone hear that? Her faith has saved thee. But what was the demonstration of her faith? Her faith was her action. Her action went before Christ with a heavy heart in front of whoever it didn't matter and she repented of her sins, right? And she washed his feet and she and she had sorrow. The Bible says that she washed his feet not only with the with the with the with that expensive uh, stuff that she had, it said it also with her tears. Right? She was sorrowful in her heart and as a result she was forgiven of her of her sins. Amen? Amen. And he told her to go what? He said to go in peace. Yes? yes? Everyone heard that? So as her sins were forgiven, Jesus then said, Now you go in peace. See the see the situation is here is that we need to we a lot of the times we want to continue to live in sin and not repent from our sins and expect some kind of peace to enter in. We want to have the peace before we go through the process. We want to feel comfortable inside before we start turning to Christ. We don't want to go through the uncomfortability of putting away our sins. Amen? Mm -hmm. 
Amen. A lot of us want to carry on. He said, go in peace and your sins will be forgiven. The first thing is we must acknowledge that we have our sin. Whatever our sin looks like, we need to identify it. We need to notice what it is and we need to, we need to then stop the behavior. Right? We can't continue on in, the, in this thing and expecting to have peace within. See, a lot of the times people get clean, they get into the recovery process, stop using drugs, put the drugs down, but they're still, we're still carrying on in other behaviors. Right? We're still acting out on other things. We're still telling lies or we justify and say, oh, well, it's a white lie. It's not a big deal. Or we, or we carry anger in our hearts or we, or we try to manipulate constantly or, or, we're, or we're trying to buy our way out of our feelings or whatever the case may be or sleep our way through our feelings, right? And, and, and we don't find that peace within because we're not repenting. We're not fully turning ourselves over to Christ and submitting ourselves to, to God. Instead, we're holding on to things. So let's take a look. We're going to go over to, and, and, and the other thing is this, right? I know sometimes people watch these messages and they're like, oh, wow, well, you know, we can be pretty hardcore with what we're preaching out of the Bible. They were, they were telling people, like, listen, like, you can't carry on living in sin, right? And they, all, all these kinds of things. And now, I want everyone to have an understanding that this is a process that we go through. As we start to get convicted on things, right? If you are getting convicted when you're hearing these messages, when you pick up your Bible, when you go into prayer, if you're feeling the conviction, like, wow, like, what I'm doing is so wrong, like, this is miserable, <laughs> I don't want to keep going here, right? This happens to some people. They get so convicted of their sins, the Holy Spirit just convicts them and says, look, it, this is what you're doing wrong, it needs to stop, and they, and they don't like it so badly that they run from it, and they say, I don't want to come to this church no more. I want to go to another easier church where they're going to... Where they're gonna, you know, tell me it's okay and I'm washed by the blood regardless of no matter what I do, right? right. I can just say a prayer and, and magic Jesus shows up, right? Listen, let me tell you something. God hates magic and there is no magic Jesus. There's one solution and that's the Holy Bible, amen? So we need to go to the Bible and see what God says. The creator of heaven and earth, what does he say? Doesn't matter what your pastor says. Doesn't matter what the new book you just picked up on Kindle says, right? It only matters what the Bible says. We need to return to the Bible family, right? And check it out. If you're convicted in your heart that something's going wrong, praise God. Glorify God because that means God is calling you. He's telling you to come out and be separate from what you're living in, right? God loves you. He's convicting your heart. Godly sorrow worketh Repentance. Everyone hear that? Second yes. Corinthians seven verse ten says, "Godly sorrow worketh repentance." So if the Holy Spirit is convicting me, I know that God loves me. Amen. Because He's telling me, Keith, I want you to stop doing that. I love you so much. I need you to step away from these sins, Keith. I need you to turn towards me. I need you to trust me. I need you to demonstrate your faith. I don't want you to just talk about it. I want you to be about it. Amen. Amen. Let's take a look at Revelations chapter 3. We're going to read verses 17 through 22. What's it say over there? Because thou sayest... Now listen, this is Jesus Christ talking. See, listen, we only need to know... Listen, this is coming from the Lord Himself. These are His words. Because thou sayest, I am rich, and mm -hmm. increase with goods, yes, and have need of nothing. This is talking to the church. This is talking to the church. This is talking to the people that think that they're all set. These are talking to the to the believers that think that they're somehow they got it made. It says, listen, you got money, you got everything all set. You think you're good. You think you're washed. You think you're clean. This is what Jesus is saying to you. So check it out. Keep going. And knowest not that thou art mm. wretched, wretched, and miserable, and miserable, and poor, and blind, and naked, blind. Spiritually blind. Yep. I counsel thee to buy me of me gold tried in the fire. Yes. That thou mayest be rich and white raiment. Mm -hmm. Thou that thou mayest be clothed, and that the shame of thy nakedness do not appear, and appoint thy eyes with eye slave. Yes. Open your eyes, he's saying to them. That thou mayest see. Yes. As many as I love, I rebuke and chasten. See, there's the words of the Lord here. 
as many as he loves, he rebukes and chastens, right? Meaning, it's just as a parent does to a, to a, to a child that they love. We don't want to see the child go out and, and end up hurting themselves and killing themselves, doing reckless behaviors and all this stuff. So because we love them, we chasten them. We say, hey, you need to stop this. Is it, is it, is it, are they happy in the moment? These kids are about to get chastened in a minute. Hey, do they like it in the moment? No, right? Do we like to get, to get held accountable in the moment? Of course not. But because we're loved, we get held accountable by the Lord. Keep going. Be zealous, therefore, and repent. Check out what he says. Be zealous, therefore, and repent. Be zealous, therefore, and repent. And I'm going to pick it up here. Tyler's going to go regulate the situation here. Verse 20 says this. Now Jesus is talking. He says, Behold, I stand at the door. Talking about standing at the door of our heart. Standing at the door of your mind. He's convicting you of your sin. The Holy Spirit is convicting you. Telling you to turn towards Him, right? Jesus is right here in your life. He's standing before you. And He's saying, Behold, I stand here and I knock. I knock at the door. Jesus is at the at the at the at the door of your heart, knocking and looking to come inside. Right? It says, "Behold, I stand at the door and knock. And if any man hear my voice, notice we need to hear the voice of the Lord." Right? He says, "If any man hear my voice and open the door, notice who has to open the door." Jesus doesn't come in do a home invasion. He's not going to come in and kick your doors down. Right? He says, "No, I'm going to knock." And if you hear my voice, if you hear me, I'm outside saying, hey, I'm out here. This is the stuff that you're doing. It needs to stop. Please let me come in. Trust me. I'm going to take care of you. I'm going to guide you. You don't have to take care of business yourself. I'm the Lord your God. You can trust in me, and I will take care of you, right? It says if we hear that voice inside, right, and we know, and we open the door, Jesus will come into our lives. It says, and I will come to him, and I will sup with him, and he with me. And to him... Check it out, verse 21. To him that overcometh, will I grant to sit with me in my throne. Notice there's a process of overcoming here, family. Right? A lot of us, we want to get to, to Oz without going through the tornado. Right? We want, to, we, want to, we, we, we want things so easy for ourselves, and we don't understand that we need to go through some stuff sometimes. We need to endure. Jesus says, him who endures to the end shall be saved. You don't get saved right now today. You get saved at the end. That's when the saving happens, right? You got to continue steadfast in this process. You got so many people running around preaching falseness that's not biblical. He says, Him that overcometh, I will grant to sit with me in my throne, even as I also have overcame. He gave an example for us. Jesus Christ came and lived through all this, all this life. He went through all the temptations. He went through all the things that we went through. He went through the sorrow. He went through the pain. The Bible, the shortest verse in the Bible says, Jesus wept. Right? Jesus felt his feelings too. He went through this, right? He said, but I also overcame, so you also need to overcome. And with me, and overcame, and, and I am set down with my Father in his throne. He that hath an ear, let him hear what the Spirit saith to the churches. There's a verse, a few verses up that also talks about not being lukewarm, right? This is something we need, we, we, can't, we can't play with it. Let's go over to 2 Corinthians chapter 5, chapter 5, 16 and 17. So that's the blessings, right? Jesus is describing the blessings. What happens to us when we go through and, and, and we accept him? I think I lost Ethan. That's the blessings of this, right, family? That, that we, get, we get eternal life with Christ. Jesus says, listen, I've gone through this. I'm in heaven with my Father now, right? I'm here with God. He's like, the, the misery's over. This is what you have in store for you, right? This is the hope. This is this is what we strive for as believers, is to get closer to God, right? So we're going to turn over to 2 Corinthians. We're going to go to chapter 5, and we're going to read uh, 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verses 16 through 17. And the Bible says this. It says, Wherefore, hence, wherefore henceforth know, know we no man after the flesh. Check it out. Know we no man after the flesh, right? It says, um, hold up. Wherefore, know you no, no man after the flesh, yea, though we have known Christ after the flesh, yet now henceforth know him no more. So this is talking about our relationship to each other, right, as a family. Everybody with me on this? Yes. 
All right, he's talking about our relationship. He says, no, he says, wherefore, henceforth, know we no man after the flesh. So we're not even supposed to be going to reference each other as in the flesh. Everyone pick up on that? He says, we don't know each other no more in the flesh. Why? Because Jesus came in the flesh. He died and resurrected. So now we're in the spirit. We're supposed to be dead to sin. Just, it's whatever, just leave it. We're supposed to be dead to sin, Right? And so as a result, if I'm dead to sin, if I die to sin and I practice my obedience to God, therefore I'm greeting my neighbors in the spirit, yes? Because I'm no longer operating in the sinful nature. So therefore I have peace within, right? So it goes on and says, Christ after the flesh, yes, now henceforth know him no more. Therefore, if any man be in Christ, he is a new creature. Old things have passed away. Behold, all things become new. Notice what it says. Not all things became new. All things become new. Because this is a process that we go through. A process of restoration, right? Yeah. All right. So as we go through this, we start seeing that there's some there's behaviors on our end that we need to go through in order to, 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 to have that peace with God, yes? We're also going to turn over to Colossians chapter 3, verse 15 and 16. Colossians chapter 3 verse 15 and 16 book of Colossians chapter 3 verses 15 and 16 what's it say there? and let the peace of God rule in your hearts amen let the what? the peace of God rule in your hearts yes to the which also ye are called in one body and mm. be ye thankful be ye thankful notice where it talks about being thankful right? it says let the peace of God rule in our hearts as we're getting closer to God, as we as we start to shed that, that sinful nature and we're obedient, we start to have that peace within us. Why? Because we're not striving and looking for things outside of ourselves to help us to feel better. I'm not looking for anything except for God to, to, to fill me up in my spirit, right? So but part of the solution here, if you notice, it says be thankful. That's part of our part of our ingredient, right? And now this is like some real basic stuff for us that are in 12-step recovery because we know this, right? We know that gratitude, an attitude of gratitude is gonna, is gonna, you know, help our spirits, amen? We know that if we just stay grateful that, that you know, we're gonna feel fulfilled. Amen. So 1 Thessalonians 5.18 says that, that, that having gratitude, right, having thanks in our hearts is, is, uh, is the will of God and Christ in our hearts. Let's go over there. 1 Thessalonians uh, chapter 5, verse 18. You there? All right, go ahead, read it. In everything, give thanks, mm -hmm. for this is the will of God in Christ Jesus concerning you. Amen. In how many things? Everything. Everything we give thanks. That means through hardships. Mm. That means through your significant other's character defects. <laughs> that means through your roommate's problems, right? In everything, we're giving thanks. This is the will of God. Mm. Everyone, catch that. So we're striving for peace, so now we're putting together the pieces in order to obtain that internal peace. And this is part of that process. We can go over to Philippians chapter 4, verse 6 and 7, and I'll tell you what it says there. It says, be anxious for nothing, but in everything, through prayer and supplication, with thanksgiving in your heart, make your petitions be known unto God. So we need to pray sincerely, amen? Mm, yes. We need to pray with all of our heart. And we also need to count our blessings. We need to say, God, I'm coming to you, right? God just told you, don't be anxious for nothing. Don't worry about it. Have peace. I'm going to take care of you. You don't have to stress these things. You don't have to wonder what's going to happen, right? We're living in a fallen world. We're in the end times right now. We're seeing prophecy on top of prophecy come true. Yes. People don't even know what they are. They're, people run around saying there's no man and woman. Everyone's got a patch now. Right? Insanity going on in the world. And, and it's troublesome, right? It's troublesome. And this can cause anxiety. They're talking about taking the guns. They're talking about, they're talking about, uh, you know, financial woes, right? The currency going downhill and all this stuff. Get him paying attention. Man. Sorry, we got Ethan on Zoom. We got the other kids in the other room. And we got all kinds going on. Talking about some peace, right? But we have all these things that are happening in the world. 
hey, all these distractions that are going on around us, right? The enemy's trying to trip us up, trying to remove us, and all these things, right? And all these prophetic things are happening, and it can create anxiety. But God said, listen, don't be anxious. If you go into First uh, Thessalonians chapter 5, it talks about it. It says, Jesus is going to come as a thief. It says, but those of us that are in Christ, we're not going to be taken by surprise, right? Because we know the signs of the end. Jesus says, listen, you can discern the weather, but you can't discern the times. As, as believers, as followers of Christ, of, of, of God's children, we need to be following these times and knowing that, yeah, all this crazy stuff's going on in the world, but I don't need to be anxious about it. This is prophecy. I need to glorify in it. I need to have joy in this and say, wow, thank you, God. I know the time's coming. Hallelujah. Jesus is coming back, right? I don't have to stress on these things. And so in verse 7 of, of, of Philippians chapter 4, verse 7 says, And the peace of God... Right? Now here, here, now listen. Look what it says. To be anxious for nothing. Then it said through prayer and supplication, with thanksgiving in your heart, let these petitions be known to God. So if I go to God without the thanksgiving in my heart, am I following the, the recipe here? No, I'm not. So I also need to go with thanksgiving in my heart, and then the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, Will God my, my our hearts and our minds in Christ Jesus? Amen? Amen. So we need to follow through the process, right? We need to follow through. So we see some stuff starts to get separated, right? We're seeing some things start to get separated, right? God will separate His people. God is calling His people out from the world, and as you're called out from the world, there's going to be some uncomfortability. Right? As you're in this process of becoming a new creature, you're being called out of Satan's world into God's world, and things are going to be different. You're going to be living a different lifestyle. And, and, and the people in the world aren't going to understand what you're doing. Let's go to 1 Peter chapter 2, verse 9. But ye are a chosen generation, Amen. a royal priesthood, a holy nation, a peculiar people, that ye should shoot forth the praises of him who hath called you out of darkness into his marvelous light. Out of darkness into his marvelous light is what the Bible says, right? God has called you out from the darkness into his marvelous light. Check it out. If you're operating in sin and you're not getting convicted, you're probably not chosen. Everybody with me on this? If you are continuously living in sin and it doesn't bother you, if you are able to show up and, and hear the words of God and you are living contrary and that's not convicting you, God probably hasn't even chosen you. You're probably not even one of the called. That's how, that's how it looks to me, right, in the Bible. Listen, because if you're convicted in your heart and you're like, man, I don't like what I'm doing right now, right? And yes, sometimes we might feel overwhelmed. And, and listen, that's okay. You might say, oh, I have so much sin that I don't know what I'm going to do. Listen, God loves you. God came and died for you while you were still a sinner. I used to think the same thing. I used to think, well, God doesn't love me because, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm living in sins or whatever. And and I, I don't know how to stop, right? I don't know how to... I have so many sins, I don't even know what to do with all these sins. And, and, and I would feel, you know, overwhelmed by that. So I'd say, well, I'm just going to continue to keep sinning then. You know what I mean? I'll just continue to keep doing whatever I want because I, I'm not going to please God. That's not what this is about, right? Rather, we should say, wow, I have all these sins, right? But Jesus came and died for me, yet while I'm still sinning right now, he was dying for me, right? So I know I can be restored, and I know that if I feel uncomfortable with these things, that God still loves me, and he's still calling me. He's choosing me to come, come be with him, amen? Yes. All right, let's go over to Luke chapter 12, 51 through 53. Suppose ye that I am come to give peace on earth. Now hear what Jesus is saying. This is Jesus Christ. He says, suppose you that I came to give peace on earth. Now check this out. I tell you nay, mm -hmm. but rather division. Jesus said he, he didn't come to give peace on earth. He came to give division. Now how do we go from the angel in the beginning crying out peace on earth and all these things, right? Because Jesus came. Jesus shows up and says, oh, no, no, no. I didn't come here to give peace. I came here to give division. Let's understand what we're talking about here. Keep going. Well, from henceforth, there mm -hmm. shall be five and one house divided. Yes. 
Five and one house divided. He's three gonna, against he's two. He's giving a parable here. Three against two. And two against three. And two against three, yes. The father shall be divided against the son. Mm. And the son against the father. Yes. The mother against the daughter. And the daughter against the mother. Yes. The mother-in-law against her daughter-in-law. And the daughter-in-law against her mother-in-law. Amen. Jesus is saying, listen, I'm coming to separate. There's going to be some separation. There's going to be things as you walk, as we walk in this newness of life, where we're going to be separated from some people. Because people aren't going to understand you. And Jesus is, is pointing out clearly, so listen, I'm not coming to bring peace. I'm calling you out, and this is going to cause problems in your house. This is going to cause problems with some of your people because not everyone's going to answer the call. Remember that God sent out the invitation, the Bible says. He invited everyone to the wedding, right? This is a picture of, of coming to heaven. He's, he's inviting everyone to the wedding of the marriage feast, right? Of the of Christ and the church. And he said, call them all out. He said, we sent the invitations to the Jews. They weren't really picking it up, right? They weren't really following through. We're going to send this out to all the Gentiles now. It said, gather them from the highways, the byways. And remember what happened when you showed up at church, right? You showed up at the, at the banquet, at the, at the, at the celebration. And the guy didn't have on his garment, right? He wasn't wearing his wedding attire. And Jesus came over and said, excuse me, uh, where's your uh, thing? And the guy was like, oh, I don't have it. And they bound him hand and foot and they took him right out of there. All right? So we need to be walking with Christ in this process. Even though you're called and you're convicted, you still need to surrender and submit and realize, like, this stuff needs to stop, yes? Yes. Matthew 25. We've got a couple more verses I'm going to wrap up. Matthew 25, 31 through 34. See, he's splitting. He came in the first round, right, to cause some divisions, to call some people out, right? He says, I'm, I'm coming to bring a sword in the family to divide the people, right? The Bible says to be separate from the world. Why? Because this is what's coming, all right? So this is this is what happens when he returns. Matthew 25, 31 through 34. When the Son of Man shall come in his glory, mm -hmm. and all the holy angels with him, then he shall, then shall he sit upon the throne of his glory. Yes. And before him shall be gathered all nations. Nice and loud. And he shall separate them one from another. He shall do what? He shall separate them one from another. Yes. As a shepherd divideth his sheep from the goats. Amen. And he shall set the sheep on his right hand, but yep. the goats on the left. But then shall the king say unto them on his right hand, Come, ye blessed of my father, inherit the kingdom prepared for you from the foundation of the world. Amen. For I was in hunger, and ye gave me me. I was thirsty, and ye, ye gave me drink. Showing the character of the Christian. That's, that's good right there. Can we we'll stop right there? Yeah. He's showing the character of the true believer, right? But it's talking about the separation. Jesus goes on in, the, in this parable to talk about, as you've done to the least of these, you've done unto me, right? As you've helped out other people, right? It's showing about the character change that has to happen within us. So our concluding verse for today is going to be in Revelation 22. It says this, 20, chapter 22, verse 11 through 12, it says that he that is, this is, this is at the end time now, right? This is the time... When, when it's done. There's a time when there's just no more going back and saying you're sorry, right? There's just a time when it's just, it's over with. And we need to, we need to stop making our decisions now, family. Like, do we want to serve God? Do I really want to seek Him and be close to God? Or do I want to just carry on living, living foul, doing whatever I want to do and just running from God? Right? Or just give God a little bit of my time and not give Him all my time, right? Do I want to just pray? I'm just going to pray like once a day or twice a day and, and, and that should be enough. No, we need to be praying all throughout the day, family. We need to be in fellowship with other believers. We need to be sharing the Word of God with others. We need to be reading our Bibles. The Bible's our food. Because the time's going to come where there's, where there's no more choices, right? Then listen, the time comes... Where there's no more choices, the Bible says, before Jesus returns. Check it out, Revelation 22. So before we see him, Revelation uh, chapter 1, verse 7 says, Every eye will see him coming in the clouds. It's not going to be a secret. There's no, there's none of that, none of that stuff is not a secret. Jesus is going to return, 
It says the dead of Christ will be resurrected first, and then we that remain will be caught up with them in the clouds, right? That's in 1 Thessalonians chapter 4. The time's going to come where before that happens, the door's closed, and that's the end of it. And then Jesus returns, just like in the times of Noah. Jesus told us. He says that as it was in the time of Noah, so it will be in the, in the coming of man. We get so many people so blind to this. They don't even they don't even they don't even read it and understand, right? Check out what Revelation 22:11 says. It says, "He that is unjust, let him be unjust still." That's done. He that is filthy, let him be filthy still. And on the contrary, he that is righteous, let him be righteous still. And he that is holy, let him be holy still. And then it goes on in verse 12 says, "Behold, I I come quickly, and my reward is with me." To give to every man, every man, not just the select few, not just these 144,000 or these whatever's, right? It says no, to give to every man according to his what? His good works. His, his works. According, every man according to what? His work. His work, it says, yes? Yes. That's what it says, not his good work. Yeah, the good work. Hopefully it works a good, right? Yeah. But notice what it says. Every man according to his works. This is what the Bible says. So who are we to try to say, oh no, you know, uh, it doesn't matter what you do and all this other stuff. So conclusion of today's uh, message. I know we had a lot of distractions, a lot of things going on over here. I'm trying to do this setup in a, in a mobile home for two babies, a teenager uh, zoomed in and navigating the internet at a campground. So I think we did pretty good. But today's uh, today's okay. message, right, <laughs> is is seeking peace, right? Is to have, it's discerning peace, knowing what is the peace of God. The peace of God is being obedient to God. If I want to have eternal peace and I want to be okay and, and right with God, then I need to seek Him. I need to establish a relationship. And the relationship needs to be pure. It needs to be untainted. I can't enter into a relationship, right? Like, like I'll just use this analogy. Let's just say Tara and I just met, and I start cheating on her right off the rip, right? And and I just cheat on her throughout our relationship, and I lie to her, and I and I and I sneak off from her, and I steal her emotions, and I and I, <coughs> you know, look at her life, and I'm like, oh, her life's so perfect, and mine's this, and I should have a life like hers, and I envy her, and I and I constantly fight with her, and 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 I. And I, and I use her name in vain and I curse her and I say all these horrible things and I put all the women before her and, and do all these things, yes? Are we going to have a good relationship? Never. No? No. You sure? I'm sure. But you love me. <laughs> right? You love me. You know I fall short. It should be okay. Shouldn't it? It's not okay. Now, if we, if we make a mistake, I fall short. She'll forgive me, right? But if I continuously, habitually just hurt and demise and just show that, like, I don't care. I'm going to walk all over her. No woman in their right mind is going to go for that, right, guys? Doesn't make sense. But we expect God to go for it. I'm allowed to cheat on God with other gods. I can put things before him. I can use his name as a curse word. Oh. I can disobey his commandments, the things that matter to him. It doesn't make any sense. But I want peace. I want to feel good. You know, I want to feel good. Or maybe I need to put some work in. Maybe I need to take some time in this relationship. Maybe I need to examine some things within myself that cause me to have these defects of character. Maybe I need to trust the process and trust that God is working through some people to try to help guide me. Maybe I need to have a little bit of faith that God's saying, go ahead, look inside of yourself. It's okay. I'm going to love you. I'm going to be here with you. I'm going to walk through you, with you, in this pain. And you just keep worship worshiping Him in the, in the pain, through the process. And let Him love you. Let Him guide you. Let Him hold your hand. He's not going to leave you. He's not going to forsake you. This is a promise to us. But we need to trust and demonstrate our faith. We can't just sit here and say, oh, I'm going to pray this day and 
and then live recklessly the rest of the week. Or I'm going to go sing at church this Saturday, Saturday or Sunday whenever you're going, right? And then live foul the rest of the time. And wonder why you don't have any peace inside. And then you want to blame God. Which is crazy. This is the enemy distorting our minds, man. We need to get centered. We need to get grounded in His Word. We need to really understand this. So is your sin bothering you? If it is, praise God. I tell you, get down on your knees right now and just pray and say, God, thank you. Thank you, Lord, that I feel the way I feel about the way that I'm living right now. Have joy in that because he has his hand on you. Tell him, thank you, God, for loving me. Give me the willingness to stop. Give me the strength to stop. Show me where to go. Hey, and then when you're done praying, and someone comes up to you later on and says, hey, did you go to a meeting today? <laughs> Do I take that as God working through some people? God loves you. He's never going to leave you. So praise God for that. We don't want the peace that the world gives, family. We want the peace that God gives. The world will start telling you peace is some other twisted stuff. Right, we're all the same, we're all whatever and all this kind of stuff. They, they, they use these, these, these things that are true to disguise what is evil. Calling good things evil, evil things good. We need to have discernment in that. We need to be able to discern those things, what's God's and what's not God's. All right, let's bow our head in prayer. Heavenly Father God, Father, we thank you for this day. Thank you, God, for this platform to be able to do this. Thank you that it looks like the Internet held up. Um, thank you for the, your word, the Bible, God. Father, I ask you to just fill our hearts up today. Um, fill our minds up today with your, with your Holy Spirit, with your power, God. Help us to focus on the things that, that you've given us and the things that you've blessed us with internally, spiritually, God. Physically, everything, Father. Help us to just focus and marinate on those things today, God. Help us to have rest today, Father. Help us to take this day, this Sabbath day of rest, and just spend this time with you, Lord, and let, and let that peace rule in our hearts, Father. We love you, God. We pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Thank you, everybody.